Thanks for tuning in to the Organically Blunt Show, a show dedicated to cannabis and the lifestyle that surrounds it, including cultivation, business, music, food, and everything in between. If you like this podcast, be sure to subscribe and follow us. The content on this show is strictly for educational purposes only. Some things on this show may be considered harmful to some. Organically Blunt does not endorse any harmful activity. If you're not 18 or older, please exit now. This episode is brought to you by Horticulture Lighting Group. The future of horticulture lighting has arrived. Shop the highest yield generating LED lamps in the world. Real efficiency, real yields, made in the USA. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Organically Blunt Show. I am Jay Blaze, your host, with my co-host tonight. Squint's back in the building. Twiggy couldn't make it tonight. He had a water emergency at the mobile home community that he maintains, so he wouldn't make it. But we'd like to give you guys a warm welcome to Smart Pots, Eric Olson. And here he is on the mic. How you doing tonight? Hey, Jay Blaze and Squints. What's up? Got done eating some pizza. We're about to smoke one here and kick happy, it back. Happy and Friday. Definitely. Thank God it is Friday. It's yes, been a long sir. week. Definitely. So how's the weather out where you're at? And can you kind of let the word know where you're located at in the United States, I guess you'd say? Yeah, sure. So Smart Pots, the company headquarters is actually based in Oklahoma City where everything's made and sewn. Uh, right here in the USA, and I just relocated for the last like 15 years. I'd been living in Southern California, mostly in Huntington Beach, and uh, about three months ago, I moved to Pensacola, Florida area. So I'm right on the Panhandle. Oh, that's got to be beautiful. Right, right by Alabama. Definitely, that's got to be beautiful. Oh. oh yeah, it's such a cool place, and like I, you know, I was living in a city of 200,000 people, and now I'm living in, you know, by kind of near the beach, uh, you know, in between Pensacola and like Gulf Shores, Alabama. And it's just, you know, beautiful area. Definitely. Definitely. Have you ever made a chance to make it up to Michigan? I'll tell you, we have some beautiful coastlines here too. A lot of people get that. We're co- you know, I actually, I actually grew up in Wisconsin. So I've been to uh, Michigan, okay. uh, especially, especially the UP quite Definitely. a bit. They call us the third coast. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Michigan is, is, surrounded by hell of water oh it is awesome <laughs> definitely except for the winter <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're rough <laughs> yeah a little bit so i've 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 watched you guys story on youtube and followed you guys as i understand you guys have a podcast that you guys are kicking off the ground i, I mean we'd let the audience know about it we always share audience with everybody oh, for we're, sure we're not we're not out to necessarily compete we believe we all take a piece of the pie here so yeah um, yeah yeah it seems like everybody and their mom is doing a podcast these days definitely so our our, so our team was like, hey, you know, let, let's do a podcast, but, you know, let's make it our own and exactly. kind of put our own spin on yep. it. So, yep, yep. Yeah, we can get into that, too, a little bit definitely, later. Definitely. So tell us how SmartBots came to be and where it originated. Kind of run down the rabbit hole, I guess you would say there. And let yeah, us... I'll, yeah, I'll give you guys, you know, the kind of the, the long and short story. So SmartPots actually uh, came about in 1984, uh, the first Smart pot was made out of necessity um the originator of the smart pot is uh ralph rieger and his son kurt rieger is the current president of uh high caliper growing which makes the smart pot product and he was originally a tree farmer and when you're harvesting trees the traditional method is to get like a heavy machinery you know tree spade with which has like four three or four you know kind of big blades that dig into the ground and then you get the root ball and you got to wrap it with burlap and and twine and then move it to the next location and usually you know that leaves a huge you know a a huge soil ball and it's harsh on the roots because you're chopping away at all the best roots that are growing outward so it's rough on the tree it's a lot of labor a huge root ball so um ralph thought hey if i come up with like kind of a a fabric pot and pre-plant this tree into the fabric pot before 
are putting it in the ground, will it contain those roots and make it easier to dig it out when it, you're moving it to the next location or, you know, moving it into uh, the next container? And they found that, yeah, those roots are generally pruned uh, below ground. And really the, the, uh, the tree bag, as it was known and still basically is, really was a below ground product for a good, you know, I think decade before people started, other tree farmers started using them above ground uh, to grow trees. And they found basically the same root pruning um, uh, effect. So like uh, a root hits the sidewall of a, a smart pot fabric and basically dehydrates or, you know, if UV light hits it, that stops its growth. And it sends a hormone or a signal through the rest of the root saying, all right, I've gone as far as I can go. I'm not going to grow any further. Now make those branch out and make those secondary fine feeder roots. So what you get, you know, in, in, in the case of a plastic pot where the roots hit the sidewall and just start going around the pot endlessly, in a smart pot, those roots are all constantly being pruned uh, and just in a, in, in a great condition to absorb, you know, maximum uh, water and nutrients, basically, that's among, a, among many other benefits. That's impressive. And, now, and that's, that's what they would call air pruning, correct? Yes. Yeah. Air, okay. air pruning. Yep. Yeah. In, below ground, we call it root pruning because okay. really the, the, the air isn't involved. Uh, but the 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 con the con the, the concept of root pruning isn't as dramatic below ground because there's uh, oh wow that stupid bird just came out. I don't know if you. Guys oh, it sounds that. awesome, and we we are not complaining. I got the loudest bird in the world that comes out like great sun goes down. Definitely. Uh, anyways, the uh, wait, yeah, yeah, I think my uh, headphone got. Out. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. No yeah, problem. My headphone got pulled out. I was just moving inside the house. It's, it happens. We got cords ourselves. We're trying to upgrade to wireless, but the way it works, <laughs> it's it's too expensive for our budget right now. So we. Well, and there's enough radiation going through our bodies as it is. We don't need more wireless radiation. Right. 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 But definitely, I mean, so these pots. Um, one of the questions our audience wanted us to ask you guys was uh, the sizes. Like, what's the smallest you guys make and what's the largest you made? Sure. So uh, technically, we can make custom sizes. So the smallest pot that we've probably ever made is like a quart size. But the smallest size that we sell generally is one gallon. Uh, and that could be in a transplanter version or just a straight up sewn seam. And then, you know, we've made containers as large as i think 1500 gallons is the largest that we've made wow <laughs> okay yeah the, those those folks i haven't personally seen cannabis grown in like a thousand or a 1500 gallon but i i've met people that have and they said that it's a sight to behold i couldn't imagine we we got some friends the mendo dope boys they're up there in humble humble yep. and uh they they grow with the 200 gallon 250 gallon bags We've talked to yep. them a lot. They're actually going to be coming out here in June, and we can't wait to actually sit down and sesh with them guys at the big awesome. at Big Cloud Farms. They're going to put on a, a concert and everything. But they they nice. they introduced us to you guys. You know, we kind of followed yeah. them and the way they did things, and we've seen your guys' product. And I've used some cheaper products. And mm -hmm. I, one of the things I have occurred with different products, and I'm sure it's a totally different material. You know, is mold. We've actually had root mm -hmm. root mold before, and we're very excited to try your guys's product on our next run but the biggest thing that blows our mind like i was talking to you earlier today they're washable they're reusable now i can Very. tell you i can tell you most people's wives aren't gonna allow them to stick this thing into the wash so yeah uh, how does how does this work kind of paint a picture here for the audience so so i would say if you're gonna do it in your washing machine or, you know, <laughs> I know lots of people who have taken it to the local laundromats over the years. And I, but I'd say if you're going to do it in your own laundry machine, make sure that you do a good job of getting as much of the soil medium out of your pot as possible. You know, let it, you know, dump out all the soil, let it fully dry, you know, give it a good brushing, you know, into a garbage can or something like that so that 99% of 
the soil and roots are out of your smart pot. Uh, and, you know, I would even give it a pre-rinse, you know, before throwing it in, in the washing machine. And that goes a long, long way to not totally fucking up your washing machine. Right, right. Now, my, now I do have one question off that just popped into my mind. And then I'm, I think Squints had a question for you too. But my mm -hmm. question is, is it safe? Do you just wash it with water? I mean, uh, is it okay to use with yeah, detergent? Yeah, yeah, So what we suggest is either vinegar, baking soda, okay. or OxyClean. OxyClean does a good job of cleaning and disinfecting, breaking down the mineral accumulants. So mainly what people are going to see accumulating on their smart pots is going to be, for the most part, calcium, you okay. know, lime scale. Sure. Calcium is is going to accumulate, you know, from the runoff um, and then from just kind of your pot sweating, which will definitely happen outdoors, you know, as the sun beats on that fabric, the, you know, it kind of sweats to keep cool like we do. Definitely. Uh, definitely. Basically. So, um, but yeah, most of that uh, mineral accumulation is going to be calcium. So vinegar and baking soda do a pretty good job of breaking that down. Uh, for people who don't want to put it into a washing machine, like what I do is I will fill up a bucket and let them soak for like 24 hours, you know, give them some agitation. And that does a good job of sanitizing and getting rid of 95% of yeah, any min mineral accumulation. And then I'm good to go. But lately I've been doing no-till gardening and honestly, I haven't washed a smart pot in like a year. Wow, that's impressive. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, my current question for you, boss, is how many units on average have you sold a a year with this current product because honestly oh, okay. i've used like jay blaze has said other products and i had used your product about three or four years ago so i've had a couple of runs with the product myself currently and i absolutely nice. love the product dude it's changed my grow game completely the material feels yeah. awesome oh dude compared to, to anything other material more. feeling that it's just got that feeling yeah yeah it, well, a that's... little more but yeah, that's that is that is, you know, the one I guess downside, if you will, is like, oh, you know, I've got to water more than in my plastic pot. But in reality, that's a good thing because the more you can water your plant, the more it's uptaking water and nutrients. So I'd say, you know, if you're if you find yourself to be like watering your plants too much, either go with a larger container size to where you know you, you're not having to water maybe a couple times a day it's just once or get a automatic irrigation system definitely definitely that's our next goal there I wanna, yeah i want to yeah. plumb something in I've, I've talked to another show that we we deal with uh the dude grow show um nice. they, they uh they just built one and i'm not that smart but i want to get that smart i want to learn about it because definitely to be able to have your reservoir outside of your grow tent because we are grow tent growers and have it plumbed in and put right at the root zone where it needs to be without us having to really sit in there and try to get the wand in there and everything else that would be nice that would be yeah definitely. yeah automate automate and then it just frees you up a little bit more to just spend more time with your plants inspecting them for you know potential diseases potential pests that have made it its way into the environment so definitely yeah. definitely so i guess you have any more questions squint i no, have a sir. few i have a few um that are just on the personal level of, of cannabis and stuff so one of the questions that a lot of people wanted to know and that we t are starting to ask in interviews is how old were you when you first tried cannabis and where'd you get it <laughs> uh... <laughs> i love that answer <laughs> 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 Hold on, let, let me let me spark up this joint real quick. Yeah, yeah, we, it, so. we we got one here too. I'm actually um this is oh I can't even remember the top. Is that the creature? This is the creature. My cousin grew this and he said, Hey, try this creature. I don't know. It's from Soul Fire Genetic. And um then he he made some hash and it's um beet brine. He used a beet brine, a beet brine hash that is made with snow. This is a snow beet bread hash of some sort you know on the process of making hash but i know he made it with hey, snow, uh, and snow sounds cool snow and beet so i i ground some up i sprinkled it in with this bud and we're gonna try it out fire away definitely definitely that's that and uh oh okay getting back to your question sorry i lost hey, track uh hey it happens. uh i think i think i was probably 13 uh with some friends from the neighborhood and i don't know where he got this bud 
said, but it was definitely some Mexican. <laughs> and uh, I remember, I think we made a, a pipe out of like a Coke can. And I remember, you know, smoking and definitely inhaling. And like my two buddies, I could tell for sure they got high. <laughs> I, I I didn't at all. Oh, yeah. So I, so I think I think I even smoked with them one more time, like after that. And I didn't get high. And I thought, okay, like maybe just some people can't get high and maybe I'm like that guy. And so I honestly didn't even try smoking again until I was maybe 18 in high school. And then uh, and then I figured, okay, you know, like sports is over for the season. Uh, let's try it. And uh, I got really, really high <laughs> and uh, just been hooked ever since. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me of my first time. I, I ain't even talked about that, but definitely, you know, uh, I remember my first time. I'll make it short and sweet. My buddy had some stuff. It was sprayed with PCP, and I didn't know. Oh it. shit! I didn't know it. And <laughs> and my buddy's like, "Hey, dude, let's smoke this." And I'm like, "What is it?" He's like, "Oh, it's like the cigarettes we've been smoking. We're kids, you know." I had to been like 15. And uh, I was up in this treehouse me and my grandfather built. This thing had everything. Electricity, cable TV, the whole nine. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we're, we're like, okay, let's smoke smoke it. So we light it up and I hit it and I instantly blow it out. I don't really inhale it. So I kept doing that. And after like three times, he's like, are you high? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm high. And then <laughs> I'm sitting there and about 45 minutes go by. And I see these little green guys with gas cans running around and tie-dye donuts. And I'm like, I don't know what this is, but I don't want no more because i have adhd and i i can already imagine what my mind's going to there's all kinds wow. of things and oh yeah it was not for me but that was my first experience of smoking cannabis well i'd say that was more your fo first experience smoking pcp than cannabis <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 and that was probably oh man that's the least <laughs> smoking that sherm that's 23 oh, years ago <laughs> so yeah that was that was quite some time night late 90s yeah did you end up like smoky and debo's chicken coop <laughs> no no we never got to do anything like that nothing fun like that that's good but but, but i tell you we did uh, we had some fun <laughs> nice <laughs> so i guess the next question would be when you're high what is your go-to munchie like is it little debbie's is it sweet is it salty is it sugary sour you know i guess that that depends maybe when i'm like on the road for work versus at home i'd say when when i'm at home like i try to munch out on you know healthier stuff um but if i'm on the road it's probably cheetos <laughs> and snickers oh, yeah. um, those are kind of my two weakness junk foods so okay and the third question we're gonna ask you here that we got if you could smoke with anybody dead or alive who would it be and why? Smoke with anybody dead or alive. It can be famous. It can be non-famous. It can be anybody. Oh, huh. man. I, you know, the, the first person that just kind of comes to mind was uh, Jesus. And I'm not like an overly, uh, you know, religious guy by any means. Right. But, you know, I, I would just think, I would just think whatever he would have to say when we were smoking shit. would probably be like the deepest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, I was about yeah. to say, talk about a spiritual awakening yeah i mean who, who, who's gonna be who's gonna be more spiritual than jesus you know right. passing the, the joint back and forth so um say the big j man definitely definitely i i agree with you there on all Quick question it. for you boss yo what is your favorite strain to smoke on day or night uh that would be dutch crunch you guys ever seen that? No. No. So that strain is extremely <laughs> rare. There's there's kind of a copycat strain that's close to it called Dutch Treat. That it's it's similar, but it's I'd say probably a bit more on the sativa side. Uh, Dutch Crunch, Jack Herrera crossed with. Oh. Shit, I, I think it's OG Kush, but I I might be wrong. Oh, I, or, or it's it's it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's 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 some it's some sort of Kush. I'm pretty positive, but it it's it's a strain that takes it's like a roller coaster because it Definitely. takes you up, you know, like a sativa rocket ship, and then like an hour later, you are just like in the couch. You know, <laughs> oh man, on, you're, you're under the couch. That reminds me of Grease Monkey. The first time we smoked Grease Monkey. I'll tell you what, bro, that shit had us <laughs> below the basement, man. It oh man, dumb. we were. 
were, we were glued to the couch. My my grandfather, the guy who taught us everything, the guy I credit everything we do, that even this show to. Oh, he, absolutely. He uh he was an old school grower. He he would have been eighty one this year. And uh. Nice. And he says to us, he says, you guys were glued to the fucking couch like Elmer's, he said. And we we're like, what do you mean? He said, you guys didn't even get up to eat. And I'm like, we were, we were, we were feeling good. <laughs> but def- nice. definitely that, well, I have to see if we can't try that out. You know, we've, we've tried a lot of different strains. And um, that's like my uncle that gave us this today. He says to us, he says, man, he says, if you guys can come across some sativa phenos, let me know. I he says, I, he says, I can't stuff. find any. And then he says to me, I'm my old school. I like that energy. He said, I don't like what that mm-hmm. you guys call that creeper weed. And I said, creeper weed? He said, you ain't heard that? I said, I've heard that, but I, that's old. I ain't heard that in a long time. And he said, yeah. yeah. And he says, he says, Acapulco. And I said, the Acapulco gold. I said, good luck. Yeah, that stuff. <laughs> I said, yeah. Man, good luck with that. Dad was talking about that stuff the other day, man, like the red leaf and the Acapulco It's funny gold when your parents, other stuff, your, like, your parents what? finally start to, and your family start to, like I was telling Squints here today, not the off track, but I was telling them how they, they're more willing to talk about it, things now that it's become closer to fully being legalized. Oh, absolutely. Then, True. Then what they used to like my family's coming to me and they're asking me how to grow and tips and what we're using now and oh you should use fish and oh this and that and organic and i'm like oh yeah you know like yeah where'd this knowledge come from when i was a kid i didn't see any of this and they're like oh right. we hit it and they're like but now that it's okay it's all right to talk about like because he gives right. me he i went over there and he gave me a tremor and he's like I'm I'm standing there and he's yakking my ear <laughs> off and I'm standing in the driveway. Mind you, I won't give out a whole lot of information, but let's just say my aunt worked for the police department for many years. So I'm standing in the driveway holding this trimmer in my arm. And he says to me, finally, he says, can you put that in your car? Like, I'm getting real <laughs> paranoid. And I'm like, why? I'm like, they don't even probably know what it is. I'm like, and he's like, he's like, I forget. Yeah, yeah. He's like, you're right. He's like, I ain't used to this. And I'm like, yeah, you are. It'll be, yeah, <laughs> it'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, when you're when you're used to a prohibition mindset, it's hard to break out of it. It I is, mean, definitely. I, I lived in California for 15 years, uh, you know, and it was medically legal the whole time. And, you know, e- even still, I'd find myself, you know, ducking behind corners to, like, smoke. And, you know, <laughs> when I could just be like, well, shit, I could just light up. Right, right. Well, that's like when my grandfather passed away. Um, the, the state police come in. The Michigan State Police were in Michigan. And they got to count his pills and narcotics and all that and stuff to mm. make sure nothing's been tampered with because he passed away from COVID pneumonia. Well, he, uh, long story short, um, they, uh, the state police is like, well, we know you grow and you got your medical card and stuff. And we're, I'm like, yeah. And my family's there and they're like, well, we didn't realize you grew on this kind of caliber. That's what they're saying. And we're like, uh, Dude, our grow was huge. That I, I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, um, and this cop's like, well, we can smell it. Can you show it to us? And we're like, yeah. So we send them down in the basement, and they open up all these tents, and the cop's like, holy shit. That shit stinks. And then <laughs> he's like, well, you're legal. Have yeah. fun. Have a good day. Nice. <laughs> and then they left. And I was just like, oh, okay, well. And and, and you know what? That's, that's the way it should be, because, like, the police are here to protect and serve us. The Definitely. taxpayers. Definitely. So, like, they, you know, and, and then it, it takes away their time from the real criminals that are exactly. out there. So, so, yeah, I think, and then a lot of cops, you know, they smoke weed and do drugs, too. So, oh, they, definitely. they don't, they, they don't, that I think overall the, the, the tide is, is, has turned and now we're just kind of picking up the straggler states like Wisconsin and Kentucky. And, right. Yeah. Yep, yep. Being from Wisconsin, I'm a little disappointed that they're uh, so behind the times. Well, you definitely, they are. And and, and I, I and the crazy thing is, is my best friend lives out in the same area called Urin. I noticed that when you gave me your number today. I'm like, man, I'm like, my best friend lives in that same area code. He, he's in L.A. And he's like, mm-hmm. he's like, he's like, he keeps asking me, he's like, man, 
He's like, I got to try your guys' stuff. I'm, he lived out here with me before he went back to California. He was my roommate before I got married. I am married now. Long story short, we won't get into that. But anyway, uh, he's like, he's like, you got to bring some of your stuff with you. And I'm like, well, I can't do that. But he's like, well, it's so much better. And I'm like, how is it better when you're in California? You know? And he's like, oh, but it, but it is. And I'm like, no, it ain't. Maybe I don't think so, but maybe. And mm-hmm. and he. We argue about it all the time, but um, it's crazy how where you grow it can change the taste so much. I was about to say the organic, the minerals and everything else is completely different no matter where you go on the map, dude. Yeah, but definitely. You know what I mean? And it changes everything drastically. Like, look at what they're trying to do with the Amazon in Brazil. Mm-hmm. You know? Side off track there. It don't. Hey, no, it's, yeah. it's all good. Uh, you know, I, I guess... I. I would have to say, in in all my honesty, that the two best, you know, flowers I've ever smoked, one was fully indoor, you know, full synthetic nutrients, sure. and the other one was outdoor, full organic. Yep. And and I think really, at, at the end of the day, it's, it's all, you know, ions of, of these elements that the plants are able, able to... Uh, uptake and whether that's you know being broken down through you know fungi and bacteria and then you know given to the plant or whether it's ionic nutrients you know in a hydroponic solution I, the the plant really i don't think can tell no um no. so you know i there, i mean I technically if you than, feed the roots sorry to, sorry i didn't mean to interrupt if you feed, if i was just learning this the other day if you feed the root, I was reading a, an audio book, well, listening to an audio book. I guess you can't really read it, but, um, it, and it said, if you feed the roots of the plant, it can technically grow in anything. There's people that mm-hmm. are taking these plants. The hydroponics. And no, not beyond that. Air, air, aeroponics times whatever you want to call the technology. And I was just talking to the dispensary here in town called Rare. They literally grow their plants and spray the root with a mist. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah. Uh, of nutrients feed and yeah. and, and yeah. water and that's how they they grow these plants completely soilless, it's... completely completely mediumless. Yeah. It's... So so one of the limiting factors for for plant growth is oxygen to the roots and that's why you know your hydroponic growing method grow faster plants get better yields. Um, because it's basically more efficient right. and 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 then also you're getting a lot of oxygen to the roots sure. now in an aeroponic situation you know then to me that that's like the ultimate in oxygen to the roots because they're constantly surrounded by oxygen and i've grown aeroponically and it's like it's like flying a rocket and if you know how to fly that rocket, like you can have awesome, quick, you know, grows. Uh, but like if you have an equipment failure or, you know, if your water temperature gets too high or a sprayer gets, you know, plugged and that isn't noticed for a while, you know, that can be a quick, you know, system wide failure. Because if, you know, r- if roots start rotting, you know, in a recirculating oh, yeah. system like that it can quickly infect the entire batch. And I've seen it happen. I've had it happen. It sucks. Yeah, I've tried a little DWC on a homemade thing we made of, uh, about a year or so ago. It worked out nice. great. And I, I used uh, nice. I used some UC roots and a few other products in my reservoir and stuff. And we grew some plants. I mean, they really took off. I mean, like I said, and a lot of people say, well, you... Some of our audience members say, "Well, you seem amateur to a lot of this stuff." Well, technically, I am. I I grew I grew so I don't know all the lingo and all the terminology you guys use, but I was a soil guy outdoor, and I tried this, and I'm like, I got to see what the hype's about. So we built a bucket system, a reservoir, and I had a five gallon net pot in it, and we we used hydroton, and I had put a manifold in there, and timed it out so it bursted so long so many other couple seconds and stuff like Mm -hmm. that and this plant took off so big that i knew i wouldn't be able to contain it where i was growing it so i ended up yeah i ended up putting it 
in the soil. And pe most people, you know, they go from <clears throat> from a soil or something to that medium, not from from a DWC to to soil. I did the uh, backwards, but I tell you, it was a great start. It was almost like having you know, my own way to clone, and it, it yeah. worked out great. I mean, I started from seed. seed. I always have. I've, I've never really had a lot of access to clones in my area. Because the, right. one, the ones that I do get in this area that I'm in, they tend to have diseases oh, like yeah. and, they, and everything else, and it's just hard yeah. to find a reputable source in this area. Makes so, sense. Um, but I, I want to learn to clone, definitely, because I feel that it would be great to... We can give it a shot. Give some... Uh, give it a shot off this next run. Yeah, because I built... Clone, a, cloning is fun. Definitely. I, and I built a cloner, too. I mean, I built... I got a 12-place cloner, so off a five gallon bucket i i did everything budget when i first started you know that's what i'm that's what a lot yeah, of people i try to teach how most people do yep and 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 they work great and people are like man you built that and i'm like yeah i did that and they're like how'd you learn it and i'm like honestly i just typed it in on youtube and found a video and it walked me through it i can't take credit for it i didn't design it but i can say that i built this one and it works okay. So. Hey, if it works, it works. Yep, so definitely. Who cares, who cares if you copied someone's design? That's definitely. what it's there for. So is there anything you want the audience to know about Smart Pots or you in general or anybody you want to thank or give a shout out to before we let you go for the night? Uh, you know, I guess first of all, uh, uh, thank you guys. Uh, shout out to the show for <laughs> for thinking of Smart Pots. Um, you know, we're we're actually made fully in the United States uh, with, you know, real American citizens working these sewing machines Definitely. and uh, the and the fabric, you know, the, all fabric kind of looks the same. But it's not until you get it in your hand and especially when you use it, because, you know, we've heard a lot of stories about, you know, certain fabric pots that either hold on to water too much and then there's mold issues and root circling or they're so, you know, thin and light that they barely make it through a cycle. Uh, so smart pots have been perfected over the years. So we wanted to thank everybody who's been a smart pot user and promoter. Um, when you Growing a smart pot, you know, you usually see great results and it's hard to go back to plastic or um, even in ground growing. Definitely, um, definitely. Yes. Yeah, and, and we'll, let's speak on what we, we got coming up w with you guys. You know, we built a relationship with you guys and because of that, we built another relationship, which is great. And, and I want to talk about that with you before we let you go too. I just remembered. We, we, we partnered up with Smart Pots to, on this next run we're doing, and we're running the four 20-gallon grow bags indoors. Yes, which I'm super excited about. Which are about. huge. Everybody's like, nice. them are huge, you know. Yeah, I'm scared. You're, you're, you're going to have some beasty, beastly plants. Yes, and a 5x5 five five gorilla tent. With, nice. With, we're not going to release the light setup yet because we're not allowed to until we're done with this harvest because of the way we got things going. But I say stay tuned for the light reveal, too, because it's pretty wild. It's something new. It's going to be cool to check out. But on that tip, we are running in these smart pots, Costa Maine, Stonington soil. It's a superstore. Nice. And I've, I, heard, I've heard good things of Costa Maine. We're going to try it out. We're, you know, we've been faithful to, as crazy as it sounds, if we're not making our own soil off some local brands, we are uh, we are using Fox Farm most of the time, believe it or not. The Ocean Forest has treated us decently for all these years. but Ocean Forest is probably one of the best bang for your buck soil mediums it out was there. the easiest to find in the area that's the reason we went with it it wasn't that mm -hmm. we wanted to it was the easiest hey we we want to get this grow going oh man we're gonna wait two weeks to get the soil shipped across no we're gonna go down and get it right now so yeah but we're, we're getting worse into, soils yeah definitely well and we met the rep at the local farm store here the supply store um and they are in the family farm and home stores now, the coast of Maine. They have a 20-foot yeah. section in there, and you can go in there and pick your wow. soil up. And I was like, 
that's convenient for the a lot of these smaller towns like we're in because we're farming we're we're an agriculture town we're a small town mm-hmm. and to be able to have where you go to get your feed for your chicks and stuff to get your soil for your cannabis yeah right there it's awesome yeah. and they have all the dry amendments there too that you can are, put they, are they selling smart pots over there i will have to look i didn't get a chance to look that close to be a lot of farm and feed stores do, you know, if they, if Definitely. they have cannabis customers, you know, it's probably it's one of the brands that they should carry if they don't. Definitely. And that's that's awesome because the, we didn't know that. And, you know, being in the small town, that wasn't where we looked. We'd go to our small town grow shop and, mm-hmm. and get what, whatever they had. And a lot of times, you know, these grow bags that we would use were were the cheap eBay special ones. I'm going to mm-hmm. admit. And they would sell them for a deal, but you know they were probably paying a cent or two a piece and reflopping them for a couple bucks a pack. But they they did okay. They treated us well. We ran into problems with a lot of mold and root rot and stuff in the past with them and other issues. And we've had a... I've always been a plastic pot guy, but I ran it against uh, a couple of them grow bags and... I do admit, I like the way they air prune, and it, the plants seem to be happier, definitely. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to try your guys' product. We got we got the big uh, plant risers. We got the we got the supersized runoff trays. We we got it. Nice. Set, it's going to be set up nice, and and we're excited to use it and document and share it with you guys along the way. So make sure yeah, you, you follow appreciate it. that. Definitely. Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh yeah it's it's a privilege to you know. T- spread the word of smart pots and you Definitely. know there's uh, there's other containers out there we know but you know I, we i think one of the main differences is the longevity smart pots will yes. last god near forever uh whereas the knockoffs you know if you get a run or two with them you know three that's that's it that two two you might do two right or more it's it's a toss-up so and then you know they're coming from china using god knows what in the materials so uh we our stuff is made in the usa we test the fabric to make sure that there's nothing in there that you wouldn't want in your plants for yourselves that's amazing definitely the quality control is bar none with you guys. Like I said, we're when, trying. When we're they trying. when they when we got ours and I'm 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 looking at them. We got a picture of squints on Instagram with them, and that thing's huge. I mean, I can sit inside of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're pretty cool. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, yeah. So, so you said twenty gallon is what we sent you. Yep, yes, sir. we're gonna run four twenty gallons in a Gorilla Grow five by five. And nice. we're, we're definitely going to do some scrogging because uh, if I don't, it's going to go crazy. Um, I, yeah. I think we're going to need a bigger tent. We got to make this work. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we got. Yeah, I we're, mean, I, I always say, like, you know, rule of thumb, especially for indoors, is, like, your plants are going to double in height to yep, where from yep. where you flip them at. And yep. so, you know, as long as you plan accordingly, it'll be all good. Yeah, we we uh we've got some great genetics. We're gonna run. Um, I'm running the blueberry muffin. Blueberry muffin from Humble Humboldt. Seed Company. Yep. yep, I've done that. And we're gonna really. What was your take? Yeah. On, what was the take on the blueberry muffin? You know, if you're into kind of like a blue dream type, you know, uh, plants like it, it seemed to be you know a good. It, it was very very flavorful. But, you know, for, for my taste, it, it wasn't as, like, you know, potent. Uh, it's more of a more of an afternoon smoke versus, uh, you know, something you're smoking in the evening when you're just really trying to relax. Well, I'm running my favorite, and it's my favorite for medicinal uses, this run. And we're going to run some uh, Blue Dream I, nice. I, I, uh, from Captain Redbeard Seeds Company, uh, along with some of his granddaddy perp, because them are two of nice. my favorites. And then I'm going to throw in a couple freak shows, get them ready to be transitioned into our outdoor area and from Humboldt Seed Company. So we're going to try a couple mm-hmm. freak shows, and I'm going to try running a couple autos out here. I think they're going to be timed out perfect for our season here in Michigan. I haven't done an auto outside, but I've heard of a lot of great luck, and 
we're gonna give it a shot nice yeah and see what i can do i might be able to get it huge um but yeah our biggest plant we grew um in a grow bag as crazy as it was uh, was a wedding cake was yeah and, and then, nobody believed it was in a grow bag and behind the wedding cake was the sunset sherbet and the sunset sherbet was just a few feet shy of your wedding cake yep my wedding cake ended up being 18 and a half foot tall we put it wow. in a how many gallon was that grow mine bag? and you ran uh we ran a 10 gallon at that point 10 gallon grow bag yep. and i know it, it probably escaped it after when i say this we ended up, it got too big in the tent. We vegged it all through winter, and <laughs> <laughs> we ended up burying it in our outdoor plot and yeah. burying it in the ground, the pot and all. <laughs> yep. And uh, this thing was so tall. There's a picture of me on Instagram standing on a ladder that's 16 foot tall, and the plant is still towering over me. Nice. <laughs> and that was my, my prize grow there. I, I'll say yeah. myself, yep. Yeah, I would say, you know, that is, like, did, did you fully bury the pot or oh, halfway? Yeah. Fully, yeah. fully, yeah. Fully yep. buried yep. that thing. That, that thing so, was a mini tree when we put it in the ground as it was. It was so about I'd the say, size. Here, here's a secret tip that, like, I'll kind of, like, you know, leave you guys with. If you have kind of the ability to at least like kind of halfway or a quarter bury your smart pot into the earth. And, you know, if, if the roots sense that there's like moisture on the other side of the fabric, you'll get the best of both worlds where you'll get, you know, the root pruning, the aeration uh, to the root zone, um, proper root development. And then when the roots tap into mother earth, like, you know, from the grounding effect and then just like it's kind of a free for all with the roots uh, at that point. Yeah, that's when you get the monster, monster plants. So, yeah, when you kind of mentioned that you buried the, the whole thing. Yeah, um, it, it reminded me of, of like a lot of outdoor growers have told me that is like their secret tip is like they partly bury their wow. smart pot. OK. See, and what, mm -hmm. what we base that off is my grandfather always had fruit trees, and that's kind of how the smart parts, when you talk about the fruit trees, it reminds me of the burlap sacks. I remember having mm -hmm. these holes dug all over in the front yard, and these trees just sitting next to them with the sacks on them, getting ready to be put in the, in the holes. And, I, and that's basically what we did with this plant, me and Squints. We, this plant was probably... All of six foot, and uh, our, pl nice. our our tent was only about seven foot, and I'm like, um, dude, we're gonna run out of room. We gotta put this in the ground, and it was like, it was about this time of year, and 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 most people say not to put stuff in Michigan in the ground until after Mother's Day, and sure, we, and we so happened to do it a couple of days early, and this thing, it rocked out until November first. I mean, it it wow. took for, it took forever to finish, but. Well, it makes sense that it was 18 feet tall. <laughs> yeah, but with that being said, we want to end this show. We want to. We don't want to take too much up of your evening. We appreciate your time, your knowledge, and we will be sure to document and tag you guys in a lot of stuff because we're looking forward to seeing what we can make out of these next monsters we want to grow. So we're excited. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. yeah, let's keep in touch, and, you know, definitely everyone should uh, check out the podcast that we're doing. It's called The Growing Revolution, and it's on YouTube under the Smart Pot channel, and then it's on uh, audio uh, podcasts. Uh, just search The Growing Revolution. It's on all of them. Awesome, definitely. Will do. You got our follow, so that's one from appreciate us. It. We appreciate you guys, and with that being said, have a great night. Thank you. We out. Cool. Nice, nice chatting with you guys. Thank you. Bye bye. You have a great night, boss. Peace. That was Eric from Smart Pots, and we're gonna end this show here with talking about our current grow a little bit, giving some shout outs, giving some thanks to some people, bring you guys up to speed on what's going on the grow. We still got some somewhat clear trichomes, but they're getting there. I'm gonna push them for another week or two. I I always say that, but 
I don't want to pull them too early, bro. Yeah, I can definitely understand that. I um, mean, we're running that grease monkey from yeah. Rob Nope. That's a that's a personal bread from, but it's custom to us because he gave it to us. It's got some sentimental. We want to make sure we make it as best as possible. We got that pineapple dragon, you know, from Green Wolf, and we got the Sofem genetic cross that. Twiggy's running. He wasn't able here to cross. talk about it. It's like a quad cross. I can't even think He's of it. He's got it somewhere up there on the counter, I think. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. It's here somewhere. Let's see here. Oh, where is it at? Oh, uh, no, it's... Oh, is it up there? Yeah, right here. It is plushberry, ace of spades, harambe's, and garlic butter. And uh, that's pretty wild. Definitely. That shit is wild, too. And it's getting close. Thing's looking crazy, bro. It's getting close. Your Zeto stinks like a motherfucker, and that thing looks like it's about dead. You know, I've noticed that I always try to push him to about that point, <laughs> and I get some absolutely loud. Oh, I know loud what you crud, had, bro. I don't know I how don't know you do what it, it, but is. you do what you do, man. <laughs> uh, you do. You, you got your own tactics. Man. I have never grown a fully green plant, man. Man, never. I, I don't Not know. One time. The burn on some of them plants is beautiful, but I. Uh, I like uh, what I, some people say the fall colors of the plant or whatever you want to call it, but it's definitely beautiful when they have them oranges and them yellows and sometimes them purples and them reds. I'll tell you what, man, I hope the zittles that I'm, that I'm running and that blueberry muffin that's going to be next is supposed to have a little bit of purple in it. Definitely, so definitely. I don't know. And I my I granddaddy some... always turns purple, so that'll be fun. I know I got some pee pee pants somewhere <laughs> in my fuck? in my yeah, bro. <laughs> some bullshit I... like nah, that. Nah, dude. Here's the thing. Yeah. It, weirdly enough, it was my first ever cross, and it went all wanky, okay? But it's like straight up purple. Okay. Like I'll take your word for it. Like CX7 purple. And okay. It, yeah, for yeah. For people yeah, that yeah. don't know about the CX7, it was like a plum crazy, like a charger almost purple, a little yep, bit darker yep, maybe. Yeah. I but still it's got nice. it. Nice. It's sitting there. It needs the motor. It, it ain't happening anytime soon. Not when a junkhead wants three grand for something that's got a hundred and fifty thousand on it. I'm good. <laughs> but yeah, um definitely um you know, with that being said, we got ran some great genetics under the Horticulture Scorpion R Spec 650R. That thing has pumped out some power. I mean, I couldn't even run the damn thing at full, full intensity because it, it was starting to burn the leaves. It was just too much. And our tent is only so big, and I have it topped out. But we, we learned a few things, and, you know, we're, we're going to give it another try after the next grow, you know. And we'll, we'll bounce back and forth. It'll be fun. We got a lot of cool lights to test out and try. And uh, horticulture treated us well. We we got some awesome method uh, light glasses for protecting our eyes. Yes, I love them. Man, they're beautiful. Can't thank horticulture grow en- enough. You know, the group. I wear them like sunglasses. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And their light is amazing. I mean, this shit is looking fire. Check out the Instagram feed. You'll see the photos. You can check us out in our Facebook group, the Organically Blunt Support Grower Support Club. We're not huge yet, but we're looking to get bigger, so join it. Invite your friends. We give away seeds. We give away all kinds of goodies. We're going to be giving away a big uh, giveaway at Cannabash. I mean, let me talk about that a little bit and let you guys know. This thing is starting to build up. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, shout out to Roots Organic. They brought some goodies. I'm talking some great liquid newts that we're going to give away on top of some other newts we're going to give away on top of a ban- you're going to get a badass banner. I mean, we're giving away the trim bin. You can't once you get a trim bin, you'll thank me. Trust me. Them things are amazing. And the amount of keef you collect over just trimming, you'll thank me again. And on top of that, we're giving away um some great phenos. Um, Sofem Genetics is going to donate some phenos. Yep. Uh, probably get some phenos from Captain Redbeard. Captain Redbeard usually comes through and always gives some awesome fire. Uh, Dank will be on board with some great fire on the on the deal too. So this thing, you know, the value of this thing is already starting to go up. On top of that, we have a Milwaukee instrument. A little tongue tied there. Sorry about that. Uh, three in one. PH Pro Kit, Probe Kit. I'm yeah, not talking just the not, not, I'm not talking just the meter. I'm talking the Probe Kit, the one everybody wants. That yeah, 
We're giving away one of those at the event. We, we shout out to Milwaukee Instruments. You know, we're 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 doing some fire out here. We're we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna we're gonna show you guys next to our blue lab how accurate they are and how great they are and how they compare and we're gonna test it and we're not gonna lie we're gonna show people the real results we're gonna let it speak for itself you know and we're getting it we'll get it all set up and calibrated for the next run that's coming soon so keep your eyes peeled we'll probably put out a video on how to calibrate it or something and we'll put some content out on it definitely we can't thank milwaukee instruments enough they gave us some great instruments and some great equipment for our next grow. And, you know, you're going to be running Humboldt Seed Company's Blueberry Muffins next run. Stupid excited. Everybody about says it, it smells like blueberry pancakes. I'm the cheap ones. What? I'm talking the ones from the hood. The ones you, you go to the dollar store and you're on a Saturday morning, you ain't got but like a couple bucks, and you're like, <laughs> man, I want some pancakes with blueberries, but I ain't got no money. You throw out five bucks, get a box, go home, cook it up, boom, boom. That smells the whole house up. That's what this shit's supposed to smell like, bro. I'm ready to try it. I'm excited either way, man. Definitely. Especially Definitely. if it hits kind of like a Blue Dream, I think I'm going to like it. And Blue Dream is great for headaches. It's just, it's always treated me well. For somebody that has sinus cluster headache syndrome, I get these severe migraine sinus headaches to the point I passed out before. That's partly why I'm a medical patient on top of a couple other things and um, like alopecia and stuff. But they, they kind of go hand in hand. And this stuff, Blue Dream, was the first strain I ever tried medicinally for my headaches. And it treats it perfectly. Better than any Tylenol, Advil, anything of that sort. You know, I, I get one rolled up. I take a couple puffs. Boom. My headache's gone. I'm feeling great. I used to have to go to sleep, you know. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. I'd have to go to bed for it to go away. It, it, it was insane. Definitely. Definitely. So, with that being said, is there anything else you want the audience to know that's going on with your current grow or what you're planning to do before we get off this horn here? I am planning currently at this point to hopefully step away completely from liquid newts and go to dry newts. Definitely. Um... The liquid newts have always treated me well. They've been going on for about four or five years with me. I've always been a synthetic kind of guy with the newts. But at this point in time, I've noticed some mold issues with some of the bottle newts. I've had to throw some away because they're just old. And it's finally time to go with something that's a little bit easier to store. Definitely, definitely. And transport. So. I mean, and the good thing about the dry, if you keep it cool and moisture-free... Put them in a closet. Put them in an airtight bin in a Ziploc bag. You're almost guaranteed you're going to have newts for a long time. Yeah. As long as they don't get hard from moisture. As long as you keep the air and the moisture out. Some people even vacuum seal them once every time. That's probably what I'll end It's up a doing. little bit of a pain in the butt, but hey. Here's the thing, though. If we're going to continue to do this, especially on a professional level like we want to do, it be worth it well roots organic shout out roots organic again you know thanks for the love guys squints is going to run your dry amendment line on our next run and he's going to show you guys what we can do with that up against our dry amendment line of the lotus nutrients we're going to do it side by side in the same atmosphere two different nutrients and we're going to see what one performs better because we're running what right i decided is i think we should do Right now we're running three different things. And we're running four well, I, different things right I now. I think we should run two different genetics. Okay. We'll run, we'll run the blueberry muffins, one in a coastal Maine soil. One with in a one, fox farm. And one with a fox farm soil. Okay. Unless somebody else steps up to the plate. At that point, are we gonna run and run bottle newts again like we did this past time? No bottled newts. You're going to okay. run the Roots Organics dry line. Everything from the pre-microbes to the bloom booster to the bloom to the grow to the veg. The whole the whole line. I, I don't have the line in front of me, but you're gonna, we'll talk about it more on the next coming episodes. But we'll have you run the whole line. We'll run four plants in these smart pots that we've been talking about this episode. And what we'll do is we'll run... 
one in this way, one this way. One with this new, one with this new. One with this new, one with this new. Basically, lotus nutrients versus roots organic. Under the same lights that we're going to be unveiling. In the same tent. In the same type pot. Two different types of soil. So there's another test we'll be running. We'll be running two different soil tests. But same phenols. Two different nutrient tests. And we'll see who how they perform. Same type of atmosphere. I think it'll be fun. We'll have some different results. We'll see how things perform. And that way we also have more of one thing per yield. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. I keep bopping the. I've done microphone. that a lot too this episode. I've Sometimes, yeah, already. it's been a, it's been a long week, you know. Um, well, I apologize to anybody's ears, you know. I'll, but definitely, we uh, we had fun this episode. It's been a while since we've been able to have a good interview episode, a couple weeks, and this should be a fun one for you guys to listen to. We have some great. Uh, Genetics coming on this run that you guys are definitely going to want to see pictures of. So be sure to follow us everywhere, like I said. And with that being said, we want to thank you guys for listening to the Organically Blunt Show. Stay lifted. Stay lit. Stay blessed. And we out. Peace. You've been listening to the Organically Blunt Show. Raw, uncut, and unfiltered. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We know we had fun. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review the show. Organically Blunt is available where you listen to podcasts. Apple, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Anchor.fm, Spotify, and YouTube. Be sure to tell a friend or two. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hook up with us on Instagram at Organically Blunt. Or email us at organicallyblunt at gmail.com. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time on the Organically Blunt Show.